In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was lifeless, empty, and dark. Then the Spirit of God moved across the vast emptiness. He said, Let there be light. Suddenly, light shone around the entire sphere of the earth. God looked at the light and said, That's good. He then divided the light from the darkness. He looked at the light and said, I'll call you day. Turning to the darkness, he said, And I'll call you night. So, with the day and the night, that was the first day. On the second day, God looked at the waters and said, Be divided. Immediately, the waters started to separate. Some went up and the rest stayed down. God looked at the waters that were above and he looked at the waters that were beneath. Then he looked at the space that was in between the two and said, I'll call you sky. On the third day, God focused on the waters that were below the sky. He said, Be gathered together into seas, rivers, and lakes. Let dry land appear. Suddenly, land rose up from the waters. Rivers flowed off the land, separating the hills and causing valleys. Lakes and seas were everywhere. God looked at the dry land, and he looked at the seas and said, That's good. Then he said to the land, Bring forth vegetation. Let there be grasses, vegetables, herbs, and trees. All of them will have seeds, so that life may continue on. Immediately plants started growing across the entire earth. There were grasses, flowers, and vegetables. There were trees of many different kinds. Some would become tall, while other would remain close to the ground. Some of the trees would produce different kinds of fruit. All this vegetation grew from that day forward, and they all had seeds so life could continue on. On the fourth day, God looked into the heavens and said, Let there be lights, a greater light to rule over the day, and a lesser light to dominate the night. They'll divide the day and the night and be for signs and seasons, days and years. Immediately, the sun started moving across the sky, giving light and warmth to the earth. The moon and stars filled the night with splendor and brilliance. God looked at the sun, the moon, and the stars and said, That's good. On the fifth day, God looked at the sky and the waters that were below it. He said, Bring forth life. Let there be birds in the skies and fish and sea creatures in the water. Immediately, sea creatures started moving in the seas, lakes, and rivers. Some were large and others were very small. There were fish of all different sizes, shapes, and colors. Birds appeared in the skies. Some flew high up in the air, while others stayed close to the ground. They had different shapes, colors, and sounds. God looked at the sea creatures, the fish, and birds. He said, That's good. He blessed them and told them to multiply and fill the seas and skies. On the sixth day, God said to the earth, Bring forth living creatures. Let there be wild animals and others that can be tamed. Immediately, animals started walking across the earth. Some were huge and others were very small. God looked at them and said, That's good. Then God said, Let's make people. We'll make them to be like us. They'll rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the animals that move across the land. So God made a man and a woman, and he blessed them and told them to multiply and fill the earth with people. He told them to rule over all he had made. He then gave them fruit, grains, vegetables, and green plants to eat. Then God looked at all he had made and he said, It is all very, very good. On the seventh day, God rested from all that he had done. He blessed the seventh day and made it special. This is how God created the heavens and the earth and brought forth life in the first week of time. Imagine the earth when it was new, before the plants had come up. In those days, God hadn't yet allowed it to rain on the earth, but caused a mist to come each day to water the land. During this time, God took some soil and shaped the first man. 
He breathed into his nostrils and Adam was alive. God planted a garden in a place called Eden. It had every kind of tree and there was a river that flowed out from the garden. In the middle, there were two special trees. One was called the Tree of Life and the other was called the Tree of Knowledge of Good and Evil. God told Adam to take care of the garden. He said, You may eat from every tree except the one in the middle, the Tree of Knowledge of Good and Evil. You're not to eat from that tree. If you eat from it, you will die. God said, It's not good that man is alone. I'll make a helper that's just right for him. He then brought all the animals to Adam and told him to name them. So Adam named all the animals, and whatever he named them, that was their name. As he was naming them, he noticed that all the animals came in pairs, male and female. Yet, as he looked around, he noticed that there wasn't a female for him. God caused a deep sleep to come down over Adam, and he slept deep and long. Then God opened up the flesh in Adam's side and took a rib. Carefully, he closed up the flesh. From that rib, God made a woman. When Adam awoke, God brought the woman to him. Adam said, This is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She'll be called woman because she was taken out of man. This is the reason why a man leaves his parents and forms a relationship with his wife, and they become one flesh. Adam named his wife Eve because she would become the mother of all people. God created Adam and Eve and provided all they needed in the Garden of Eden. Like the animals, they had no need of clothes, yet they were not ashamed. The serpent was most clever of all the animals. One day he said to Eve, Is it true God won't let you eat from all the trees in the garden? Oh, we can eat from all the trees. That is, except for the one in the middle. God said that we aren't to eat that fruit or even touch it. He says if we do, we'll die. It's not true. You won't die. God told you that because he knows if you eat that fruit, you'd be like him, knowing good as well as evil. The woman looked at the fruit. It was beautiful and looked delicious. She thought, If I eat this fruit, it'll make me wise. So she took the fruit and ate it. She then gave some to Adam, and he ate it as well. Suddenly they realized they were naked, so they sewed some fig leaves together to make coverings for themselves. As evening approached, they heard God walking in the garden. Suddenly they realized they were afraid of God, so they hid among the trees. Adam, where are you? Adam knew he had to answer. He said, Lord, I heard you walking in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Who told you that you were naked? Did you eat of the tree from which I told you not to eat? It was the woman you gave me. She gave me the fruit and, yes, I ate it. God turned to Eve. Why did you do this? The serpent, the snake, tricked me into eating it. God turned to the snake and said, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all the animals. From now on, you'll move about on your belly. There will be hostility between you and the woman, and there will be a battle between your offspring and hers. He'll crush your head, while you'll only bruise his heel. Looking back at the woman, God said, Your pain will be great when you give birth to children, and having babies will be associated with pain. You'll want to control your husband, but from now on, men will dominate over you. God said to Adam, I made it very clear that you were not to eat from that tree. Because you have disobeyed, the ground is cursed. From now on, you'll work for your food, and the ground will fight against you. It'll sprout thorns and weeds. Hard work will mark your life until you return to the soil from which you came. God dressed the man and his wife in clothes made out of animal skins. He then sent them out of the garden, where they worked the soil for their food. God said, People now know evil as well as good. They'll try to get to the tree of life so they can live forever. Therefore God put a heavenly guard outside the garden. From that day on, people were separated from the tree of life.
In the aftermath of Adam and Eve's disobedience, they were expelled from the idyllic Garden of Eden. God, in response to their transgression, pronounced various consequences. The serpent, symbolizing cunning and deceit, was cursed to move on its belly, and enmity was established between it and humanity. A prophetic declaration foretold a future conflict between the offspring of the woman and the serpent, with the woman's offspring ultimately triumphing. Eve faced the burden of increased pain in childbirth, and her relationship with Adam would be marked by a struggle for dominance, with men ruling over women. Adam, for his disobedience, bore the curse of toiling for his sustenance as the ground yielded thorns and weeds. Mortality became an inevitable part of human existence, marked by the return to the earth from which they were formed. Yet, even in delivering these consequences, God displayed compassion by clothing Adam and Eve in garments made from animal skins. As Adam and Eve left the paradise of Eden, God stationed a heavenly guard, separating them from the tree of life to prevent eternal life in a fallen state. Despite the grave repercussions of their actions, God's mercy persisted, and humanity embarked on a journey shaped by the knowledge of good and evil with the hope of redemption woven into the fabric of their existence.